dust control panel where I can pop it open. It's not hooked up to computer now, so there's nothing running the display indicators. It's just bare circuits. And good old homemade stuff is on a bit of a tight budget when I built this thing. Just kind of had to make do with some found items. Anyway, crack it open. And what we've got here, along the top, the sandwich of boards, LED display board, which you can see, and then the sensor board on top of it, which you can't see. And let's see, back here, yes, yep, there's a board that handles uh, just a little bit of signal processing that I do that's pretty special that cuts down electrical interference and uh, another couple of boards that handle um, basically interfacing with the computer and um, interfacing with the display and the far end is a board that uh, handles uh, some of the stuff for MIDI and such as that Set up in front of my uh, oscilloscope screen. So you get a little better idea of what's going on. The uh, top display is the raw signal from the sensors, and bottom display is uh, up to my signal processing I do, which does real time. There's no real delay in between these signals, and maybe a few microseconds. That's about it. And the top display, even if not being touched, it's a lot of uh, a lot of residual noise coming through. The bottom one, not so much. I got a little bit of ground bounce and stuff from my poor hookups for the scope. And put your finger on it, the top one. It's kind of hard to tell even where anything's being touched. The bottom one, I get a pretty clear display. If I uh, grab a hold of this here wire, I got a three volt uh, square wave with about 30 kilohertz coming through it. And that's uh, basically uh, the same frequency my sensor's running at. It's an arbitrary frequency I chose, but basically that's, if you're running a similar signal frequency for noise that the sensor works at, that's where you usually have the most trouble because you can't filter it out. Except mine uh, doesn't worry about it. <coughs> now if the extra noise come in, the top display goes real wonky, the bottom one's still fairly clear. And I shall zoom in on that. Hopefully. Here we go. Now, without any extra noise coming in, just ambient out of the air. Top trace. Yeah, it's still kind of hard to see what's going on by the naked eye, except a lot of noise involved. Bottom trace fairly clear. Move my finger up and down. And it clearly indicates where it's at. I can put two fingers on it. Same thing. And let me grab the noise wire. So I've got about three volts noise coming into me. And again, it's you know pretty close to the same frequency the sensor works at, which is where the most trouble will show up. Move my finger back and forth. Pretty clear signal. No touch, touch, no touch, touch. And let me uh, change the frequency of the noise. You get the same results, broadband spectrum noise, you know, leakage from network cables, fluorescent lights, cell phones, you name it, it doesn't care. It's not averaging, it's not second guessing, it's not frequency hopping. It's just, um, cancels the noise out. That means it can be very responsive. If you want uh, millisecond response time, you can give millisecond response time, no problem.
Since its introduction over 30 years ago, the DX7 has earned a reputation as one of the hardest program synthesizers ever. I wanted to see if I could make it one of the easiest. That's why I built this. Of course, someone will ask, is this available? I repair televisions and computers for a living. I don't have the resources or business savvy to develop and market anything. Which is unfortunate. It's 10 seconds using this and you're hooked. 10 minutes and you'd refuse to use menus ever again. Menus? We don't need no stinking menus.